All right, so here we are on section 27, working on the firewall. I've gone ahead and um, it's been pretty straightforward up to this point. You, know, you just wanna take your time, make sure you've got everything going in the right direction. There's a couple of nut plates that go on the hot side. We'll call it the hot side and the cold side. We're looking at the cold side right now. So this, this nut plate goes on the cold side. I mean, hot side. This one goes on the hot side. The rest go on the cold side. Now, um, I did go ahead and prime these parts and I use the Stewart Systems Epoxy Prime, not the Eco Prime, which I've been using on the fuselage, um, only because this potentially could touch fuel and oils and other things. I understand that there's a fear of this getting really hot and exposing some gases into the cockpit. Um, everyone will have their own opinion on that. It's not really a fear of mine. Um, so basically at this point, you know, this seems to be a big concern. There's some people who talked about doing some things at this stage to get these to line up better because they're concerned about the edge clearances. Like you can see if you just pinch them together, that's not gonna work. You kind of have to push it like that. Uh, I don't really think there's much you can do. I mean, it's, it's hard welded here. I'm not gonna start hammering that and weaken that weld joint. I'll, I figure I'll cross this bridge when I get there. If I learn something new in the process, I'll let you know. But for the most part, the information I have is uh, is not great on that at this point. This box is Clecoed in, but I will not be riveting any of the common holes. I'm going to basically rivet everything else, and then I will remove this. And I'm going to use some Fire Barrier 2000. I think a lot of people use fuel tank sealant. Oops, sorry. I'm going to use this stuff, fire barrier silicone sealant, uh, 2000 degrees. So I'll put a little bead of it on the other side. And then when that's ready, I'll rivet that in. And then I'll also kind of seal in these holes from the other side. Other than that, I think this is going to be pretty straightforward. Just a bunch of riveting. I do have the oil cooler box. Uh, it arrived a couple days ago. I ordered it ahead of time so I could just deal with it now instead of having to do it later. It's Vans VA186. I might suggest you just have them add this to your fuselage kit, save you $16 in shipping. And then I also went ahead and I got the oil cooler, which comes in the firewall forward kit, which I probably won't be ordering because I'm going to be kind of piecemealing it all together. This is the 2007X, not the 2006X, which is recommended. I'm 99.9% .9 sure I'm going to do cold air induction and nine to one compression on the cylinders, which is going to boost the horsepower to about 300 horsepower. So they recommend one size larger. It has one extra row in the oil cooler um, versus the standard one. So it requires a little modification. Um, the gentleman from Airflow Systems, Airflow Systems, who makes this, has a instructions for the modification. You can get it off the website, but basically, because now, instead of the holes lining up here and at the bottom, when the holes line up at the bottom, it sticks up out at the top. So basically, you cut this piece off, or you do something, I don't know exactly what, I think maybe you rivet, maybe you rivet an L bracket here that sticks up and then you, you, it has instructions, I haven't gotten to it yet, but basically I'm gonna do that modification now, which is why I ordered this. There is a set that I did not order, it's about 100 bucks, 117 bucks I think, that has the very large AN bolts and standoffs that go here. Uh, I think I'm just gonna order some standoffs from Amazon or just some aluminum tube from Amazon and then just order the bolts. I think I need like AN36s, like AN336As. 
to get all the way through this and into the nut plates over here. But I'm also gonna put a butterfly valve with the TCW servo actuator. So I wanted to kind of just go ahead and get all of this modification done now so I don't have to deal with it later when it's in the airplane and, and a little harder to do. But that's it, we'll update you as I start riveting here. Right now I'm trying to figure out how to stand this thing upright so I could rivet it and buck it. Um, I think actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it upside down and rest it on these and then I can get a bucking bar underneath, but I'd still rather have it vertical. Um, I actually just think I got an idea. I think I could put it maybe between the two tables and rest it. I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm going to try to figure that out, how to stand this up vertically. And then uh, I'll update you when I have a solution to that. All right, so we're still working on section 27. Um, this was pretty straightforward, just the scat tubing, and we finished riveting up all the firewall. But now, 27-4, we gotta Clico all this up and get it all to fit. And the challenge that people have run into, there's a lot of Facebook articles about this, is getting this bottom section holes to line up when all of this is Clicoed up. Now, I'm gonna get more Clicos in here and confirm all the fit. But what you have to do is grind a little bit of this kind of bracket, this what's painted kind of this off white here. I don't know what the number of that is. You gotta grind a little bit away so it fits in here with this bent angle. Um, otherwise, when it's flat, I'll take a picture of the other one when I Clico it up and show you what happens here. But that's all, it's just a simple fix. You just gotta grind a little bit away and then it fits fine. So I thought it would be easier to just show a video. So again, I haven't Clicoed this all up yet. I got a couple of Clicos in, but because it just literally just doesn't fit. So like on the other one I showed you earlier, you gotta grind a little bit away. So this is what it happens. This is on the left side now. So I'm gonna grind, grind a little bit of that away by hand and then I'll, I'll put it back in and it'll fit fine. Okay, so the right side tunnel is done. Um, once you got to this point, oh, I just realized I'm missing one rivet. I'll have to get that one for the tunnel access, but got the access panel in, got all the, uh, the nut plates. These three go on the outboard side, which is strange, but I'm sure it'll make sense later. Um, I think I discussed this in the videos earlier, but you have to grind a little off of this channel, like on the inside right here. I'll show you from the other side right there to get it to fit. But again, I'm happy with all of these rivets. Pay attention because it says that the shop head should be on this side of this gear tension bracket, I think is what they call this. But yeah, so that's it. This is all ready to go and then it'll get, gotta do the other one, and then it'll get clicoed on or uh, riveted onto the firewall. And then um, I got the oil cooler box done. I have the stainless steel heat boxes and I've got some Fire Barrier 2000, so I'll be doing the uh, oil cooler box from the front and this from the front with some fire barrier. Um, and that should do it for the firewall assembly. I think this is section 27. Okay, so not sure why, but the instructions don't have you dimple these holes until after this is all installed. And even with my pull dimple set, this metal is so thick, I had a really hard time dimpling them. So my suggestion is to dimple these holes and dimple the, the bracket before you install all of this uh, so you can get to it. Um, so I had a really hard time dimpling those. Those are gonna be installed with pull rivets, but um, yeah, I, I was not able to get a good dimple using the, the pool, like the close quarters dimpler. So, uh, yep, there you go.